So, but that was not the object of my prayer point. I was just trying to seek God. And I didn't even know what in God I was seeking, but I was just responding to a hunger. Can you be foolish enough just to respond to from things? Your understanding might be really, really unfruitful as to what it is that is driving you. When the Holy Ghost becomes your driving force and it begins to move you around, many times it leaves your mind behind. Because according to him, the most important organ is not your ability to reason. It's your heart, your ability to follow. Hi, welcome back to this channel. Here's another powerful content from us and we believe that you're going to be blessed by it. Please do well to like and share this video. And if you're new to this channel, can you hit the subscribe button to stay updated on more powerful content like this. God bless you. First of all, there is an appetite that the Holy Spirit comes to kindle inside of you that is different from your appetite for food or drink or for sleep. Because don't forget, this, that statement qualifies him. Sent down from heaven. So he brings the perspective of heaven. And when you begin to walk with him, he begins to furnish in you a hunger that is beyond food. A hunger that is beyond the hunger for natural things. He opens up an appetite. That appetite, if you begin to feed it, is the basis of the change that you will experience in your taste buds. So much so that that appetite begins to define your life if you feed that appetite. Because the more you pray, the more you begin to feel like praying. The more you fast, the more you begin to desire to fast more. The more you spend time in the presence of God. If you stop spending time, you begin to feel at loss because he is sent down from heaven. That's how heaven wants you to be operating. And when you begin to depart from that kind of operation, you begin to feel a void. That is something is lost, something is missing. Is the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. As he begins to come into your space and begins to come into your space gradually, he's hoping, he's doing all of that with a hope that you will trust him. It is when you have trusted him that you know that even though you feel tired and he's calling you to spend some time with him, he has good intentions. And what he has to give you is much more than the sleep that you're about to enjoy. He, he walks around you and he gets you to trust him. That's the major key to your advancement with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to trust him. Many of us don't trust him. That's why when he's calling you, you feel there's something that is more important than his call. And he's such a gentle man, he will not rule any space that you're not willing to give it give to him. You know, he doesn't, he won't take it until you are willing to let it go because you have discerned that his mission around your life is a positive mission. It's for good reasons that he wants you to hunger after God. He creates the, the environment and then you begin to seek after him. So your seeking is not plastic, it's based on a hunger. You see, sometimes it can throw your life into some form of confusion so that you begin to lose confidence in the things that you have so trusted and you'll give him an opportunity for him to show you that which will last forever. So dealing with a personality that is come from heaven many times looks like a contradiction because the things that you have known, the things that you have exercised, the things that you have confirmed to be sufficient. Suddenly when he comes into your space, he fights against that, that sense of sufficiency that you have gained around things so that you can give God the chance in order for him to suggest to you a new basis of sufficiency. He comes to change your perspective, your vista, your skill of judgment. He comes to change everything around your space and he's so radical and he, he is so skillful in administering the intent of God to establish the economy of God in your life. He will not stop. You run away from him, he will never leave you. He'll be haunting you. Sometimes put stumbling blocks in your way so that you stop and consider. All he's trying to do is to get you to become acquainted with the things that he has that he wants you to begin to hunger for. The Bible reveals that after Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was and hunger. It was on the strength of that hunger that Satan latched his temptation and said, since you are hungry, you are supposed to do something about your hunger. And then Jesus began to tell him that from the scheme of things that is ordained for man, 
there is something that is more important than satisfying physical hunger it means jesus was hungry for something that was beyond physical hunger the holy spirit can step into your space and when he does he gives you a new scope of preference and the things that are choking people all around you those things are present with you but you cannot see their effect because you are held up on a different platform your context may not change your location may not change but your operations change totally because the holy spirit provides other platforms beyond the context of the natural so if someone wants to describe your life you cannot describe it from the natural perspective because it doesn't make sense why you are not fighting for your right here you are ashamed and you didn't fight to redeem your masculinity it's a, it's a proof of the fact that there are several things that you have begun to see in the holy ghost that the normal eye cannot see there was every reason for jesus to have fought in order for him not to pay temple tax because proselytes are the ones that are supposed to pay temple tax and then suddenly they say you guys are owing tax and jesus when he was addressing his disciples said so that we will not offend peter you used to be a fisherman try yourself out again in the water side and jesus refused to fight for his right and you look at that you say no he's a weak man it, it, it's, it's from heaven it's, it's a civilization that is furnished from heaven the earth may not be able to understand a man that is sucked into the holy ghost the bible says that that the people that heralded the gospel they were sucked into the holy ghost it was through the agency of the spirit it was the one that precipitated the words that formed their their deliverables and that was why we became victims of their preaching they were aided by the holy ghost sent down from heaven and the things that he's willing to bring into our lives he's willing to unfold into our lives the bible says even angels desire to look into it so the issue tonight is will you allow him a chance a chance to furnish his intent upon your heart he gives you a new lease of life that is different from how you have known life for many years the point came in my life when i was diligent about seeking the face of God I, I was not looking for a job I was not looking for money I was not looking for a wife I was already married God had given us children so the normal kind of Nigerian prayer was not the prayer I was praying because in Nigeria if you want people to pray just let's pray about our wife the prayer meeting will succeed let's pray about our children you'll see people jumping so, but that was not the object of my prayer point i was just trying to seek god and i didn't even know what in god i was seeking but i was just responding to a hunger can you be foolish enough just to respond to from things your understanding might be really really unfruitful as to what it is that is driving you when the holy ghost becomes your driving force and it begins to move you around many times it leaves your mind behind because according to him the most important organ is not your ability to reason it's your heart your ability to follow so he leaves your head and it begins to interface with your heart and that's not that's not something that we are used to moving ahead with your heart and living your, your you can understand it later but we want to understand it first before we move but the holy ghost is going to change the paradigm so when i began to press into him to find out okay there's this hunger and the most reasonable thing to do is to begin to um advance in line with the hunger because the hunger was not a function of any other thing but the holy ghost it was that invitation that looked it's it was like hunger that was the invitation that he extended that changed my life i came to provoke somebody here today that that hunger that has lingered you have not been able to give it attention for years but it has not gone you have not been able to lock yourself up in a room on a saturday and cook all the food you need to cook on friday so that you'll be free on saturday to attend to that hunger if you are not willing to pay that price you may not know what is packaged in that personality called the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. I came to challenge you to give him a chance to show you the things that are locked up in him. He is the fullness of all that the Father wants to give you. He is he captures the fullness of everything that Jesus prayed that should be made available to you. It's captured in him. So I began to press. And I trust that everyone that leaves this conference will find a moment to begin to press to exercise your spirit. You know, somebody is talking about a job, he's talking about how that he needs to get married quickly. And what, what was the other major thing? Okay, he needs papers, papers from the government. 
pay pastor. You pay pastor. Those things are legitimate and they are important. But you see, there is something called a scale of preference. Some other things can wait so that you can attend to some things that are more important on the scale of preference. The thing that is most important on the scale of preference is to find out what this person has in his heart concerning you. The Holy Ghost sent down. Amen. If you are still with me, say Amen. What does he have in mind? What does he want to do? And we began to pray. We didn't, even, we didn't know how an encounter with God looks like. We didn't know how the voice of God looks like. It, just in case he decides to speak to us. We don't even know how the experience looks like. So, but we're just responding to hunger. Because that's the first thing he does. He kindles hunger in your person. It is that hunger that creates a sense of dissatisfaction in the things that used to satisfy you. Those days when you hit $7,000, you are pounds. It makes your day for six months. For six months, you are okay. Because you like this kind of money that is coming. The money will still be coming and it kindles, it kindles that desire inside. In spite of the presence of the money, you are not just feeling. It's a spiritual situation. And if you give him half a chance to navigate in the direction of that the hunger is calling, then he begins to give you understanding. But he will make you sick. Such seeking that is seeking with all your heart. If you have not sought enough, he will conceal himself. It means you don't desire him more than the money. The money is you still your driving force. He doesn't want to play second fiddle in your life. He must be the object of your existence. It, the thing is that he is jealous. That's how he is. He's, he's a jealous personality. He will not want to share you with anything. So as long as mammon still holds sway, he still keeps bringing hunger. Until he can destabilize your desire faculty. Such that you are willing to take a journey. You find out that the balance of your center of gravity in the spirit it's not occasioned by the pounds that have come in. So you know that for sure. Before you begin your adventure. Then he begins to open his chambers to you. And uh, a school, a school of the spirit begins. He begins to educate you about the value system of heaven. Because the intention is that you be an ambassador, a representative of heaven upon the face of the earth. You sustain the value of heaven. You bring the perspective of heaven. Your life reveals the priority of heaven for mortal man. You become a studio that is illustrative of the will of the Holy Ghost. And I want to tell you something. Because of the fact that he is jealous, he will insist that you consecrate to him. Before he begins to show you what he has on the menu, there is a strong demand for consecration. The doctrine of consecration, we can find it in the book of Matthew chapter 6, um, Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 12. And um, there's an aspect of it that is in Romans chapter 6. There's an aspect of it that is in Romans chapter 12. The result of consecration in Romans chapter 6 is that you begin to live a life that is sanctified, a life that is holy. The culture of heaven becomes your natural disposition. You become allergic to the fantasies of this age. And you are, you are, you are submitted to God to be a carrier of his nature. His nature begins to constitute you so that your default mode becomes consistent with the culture of heaven. In Romans chapter 12, the result of con consecration is that it affords us the opportunity to know the will of God, to discern the mind of God, and to know the emphasis of God for our lives. You need to know what your life was meant from God's perspective to be spent upon. And just in case you don't know, you'll be beating about the bush and doing some mundane thing and think you're actually making progress. You'll be trying to make people understand that you're not failing. And that's relativism. When you really don't have the accurate rest, uh, reference for your life. It is only God that can now open the vista and take you into the inner chamber and show you what your life means from his perspective. If I preach to meet your need, I helped you temporarily. But if I preach and my preaching reveals your purpose, I've helped you permanently. Because in, in administering your purpose, your needs are going to be met consistently. So the Holy Spirit holds the key to your essence. And when somebody is that significant, he doesn't need advertisement. Because if, any, if by any means you find the reason why you exist, you came to him. So 
so deeper things than, than marriage job opportunity buying a property those things become available in the Holy Ghost knowing the reason for your existence knowing the reason for your endowment your essence all of that is trapped in him and he comes from heaven with that perspective your true identity at is captured in God's frame of things will never be known until you accept the errand that this friend from heaven has come to administer around your life and I tell you the truth if you want to stay in tune with him there are two things you will do very frequently you will pray much and you will fast often the Holy Spirit intends to take you beyond this realm this existence into something that is higher and except somebody standing where you are standing the person will not be able to interpret the essence of your life you want to prosper I show you a way you want you see when you walk with him he will manifest your destiny in the brightest colors much more than you can ever ever hope to manifest and that's the second level of dominion when you do that in spite of the presence of witches and wizards and and personnel from the kingdom of darkness there is nothing they can do because what you have become is rooted in your intercourse with this messenger coming from the dead heavens he's administering god's purpose through your specimen there's nothing the devil can do about it. it's only if the devil has power enough to strangle the holy ghost that's when your life will come down because what i'm talking about is building your life on the holy ghost in these shaky days this time of the shake-up strategy where nations are shaking we will need to build our, our lives on a foundation that is not subject to change so i bring you the messenger from heaven thanks for watching we believe that you've been blessed by this powerful content. Please do well to like and tell us how this video has blessed you in the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel to stay updated for more powerful content like this. God bless you.